Okay, in this episode, we are in Moab in Utah. So we have two goals that we had on our bucket list for this episode. One is to go to Archers National Park. We have a timed entry for 11 a.m. It is now just after 10. Then we are going to Canyonlands National Park. Now we know that this is the stereotype of what most people come and do to national parks. There is a stack of other things you can do in Moab. Uh, our favourite YouTube channel, uh, The Adventures of A&K, have a great series. They just did a couple of weeks ago on lots of other things you can do in Moab. So there'll be a link in the description below if you want to find out more about Moab. But for our adventure, Archers National Park and Canyonlands. You, if you're wondering about our postage, we finally got it sorted. It did cost a lot of money, uh, around about the same as if we had bought extra baggage for the airline. So we weighed it, literally weighed it up, <laughs> and we worked out that, well, if you're going to pay that for the airline and drag extra bags around, we may as well post it. So that's what we've done with post it. We don't have extra bags to drag around. And so now we're just with our summer clothes, all our souvenirs are gone and we're off to Archers National Park. Let's go. The National Park's timed entry system helps control the number of vehicles coming in. They should still be prepared to wait in line, even if it's not as long a wait as it would be without the timed entry. Since we only had one full day in Moab and it was a warm June day, we figured we'd end up spending a lot of time driving to the key viewpoints where we would take the shorter walks. So we got into Archers National Park. As you saw, there's a line up getting in. That's just how it is over here in the summer. It's busy. So expect a bit of driving as we go through. We're going to stop as, as many times as we can, get out, look at these amazing views, amazing rock formations. Yeah, so stick with us. Okay, so we're going to take this first little walk called Park Avenue. It goes to what I've seen on YouTube or Google Earth is that it's got a beautiful view, so let's go and have a look. The Park Avenue area is a short walk that most people go to first in the park. It's a really popular spot. You might have to wait again for a parking space, but there's always a steady flow of people coming and going, so we didn't have to wait too long to get our spot. The day was really heating up fast, but the breeze made it bearable. We were definitely in a different climate. Even the shorter walks made us thirsty. Okay, so we stopped at this place called the La Salle Mountain Viewpoint. Now the car is saying that it's 97 Fahrenheit, which is about 36 degrees Celsius. One cool thing about Archers National Park is that you can choose your own adventure. If you're up for it, you can go for the longer walks and check out some off-road spots. Alternatively, if it's scorching hot like it was for us, you can still catch some awesome views by driving and doing shorter walks. However you choose to do it, make sure you bring a good hat and a lot of water. The geological formations in this area are amazing. Massive sandstone structures weathered by the passage of time have created breathtaking natural sculptures. Despite its classification as a high desert park, the sedimentary rocks here vividly depict marine, nearshore and continental deposits. Most of the majestic arches themselves have a storied past originating from the Jurassic period around 200 to 150 million years ago. So this is an amazing place to come and see. I went to Ayers Rock and the Olgas or Uluru and Karajuka about 30 years ago. And they're fantastic and they're massive, but not on the same scale here as is that Archers National Park. So there's just so many of them spread so far across here compared to what we've got that I've seen in Australia. Fantastic. So we stopped at one of the car parks, which is pretty hard to get parking. And we've hopped out. The ground keeps changing at different places. So this part here is really, really sandy. In fact, it looks much like the color and type of sand around Alice Springs from my memory 30 years ago. 
And if you have a look at this hole, there are little footprints around. There must be some little mouse or something like that that lives in there. And little signs around as well to say, keep off the dunes to give the plants a chance to get a hold. The park's oldest rocks are from the Pennsylvanian Paradox Formation and they tell a fascinating story. These rocks were formed when the ancient supercontinents Gondwana and Laurasia collided, creating an uplift called the Paradox Basin, which was periodically flooded. So we popped into one of the first windows, they call this, is on the window trail. Um, and this is a really good view from here. If you go further up, which you can, there's a line up to take your photo and all that sort of stuff. But you can see it very clearly from here. And the people standing inside give you a bit of an idea of the, the size of it. So we've stopped at nearly every second turn out there, is it? And there are a lot of, well, what they call pull outs or turn outs, where you can just park and go for a quick walk. We've stopped at every second one of them. We haven't videoed everything because there is so much to video here. Here's just another example behind me of something completely different again. There's lots of arches, lots of short walks or long walks, but these are some of the highlight parts that we've seen. I think it's a pretty awesome place. The oldest rocks on earth are the Jack Hill Zircons in Western Australia, dating back to 4.4 billion years ago. Utah's oldest rocks are around two and a half billion years old. We had an awesome day at Arches National Park, but we ended up staying way longer than we thought. There is just so much to see in the park. We really wished we had more time to explore Moab because there's so much more to see around there as well. But we were still happy to be here and it was time to head over to Canyonlands for the late afternoon light. All right, so in Utah, the national parks are really, really big. We're on our second national park for today, which is pretty ambitious. We're right here at Canyonlands National Park. It's late in the afternoon. It's really hazy. It's almost smoky, but it's just haze. So we'll pop in and just see what we can see in the limited time we have. The breathtaking vistas of the Canyonlands left me in awe. I was completely unprepared for the immense scale of this place. The awe-inspiring cliffs and the expansive desert vistas seemed to stretch on for endless miles. It was a landscape unlike anything I had ever encountered in my life. Canyonlands Park is divided into two massive sections, the North Canyonlands and the South Canyonlands. Both areas offer plenty of driving and numerous trails for adventurous travellers. During our visit, we explored the North Canyonlands and aimed to reach the Grand Viewpoint Overlook at the end of the road, which was about an hour's drive plus stops from the turn off at Highway 191. Wow, <laughs> check out. That's awesome. That is huge. I have never in my life seen anything like that. And this is nothing compared to what we're going to be seeing soon. So we'll finish this episode here. It's been a jam-packed day going to Archers National Park and Canyonlands in one day. A bit ambitious. They are two very different places. So Canyonlands is very different 
lots more trees, lots more flowers compared to arches that we've seen. Both the national parks are quite busy, but we'll finish this episode here. And in the meantime, take care of your mates.